What's, What's up, up YouTube? YouTube? It's Savannah. And John. Back at it again. So what kind of PC builds are we going to do today? As you probably know, Intel has recently released their new processors, Skylake, <laughs> on August 5th, 2015. And since then, we've been seeing a lot of cool gaming builds using the new Skylake i5 6600K, the successor to the Devil's Canyon 4690K. So before we jump right into the build, we want to give you a quick breakdown on what to expect out of the new Skylake processors. It's on the new 1151 socket, so these use new motherboards and won't work with old ones. The Z170 chipset unlocks overclocking and supports DDR4 memory, and they don't come with stock heat sink fans. But the CPU socket layout has not changed. So any CPU cooler that's LGA 1156, 1155, 1150, and 1151 compatible will work. All right, now let's talk price and performance between an i5 6600K gaming build and an i5 4690K gaming build. So first off, there's a $20 price difference between the CPUs. The i5 6600K is $250 and the 4690K is $230. That equates to an 8.7% increase in price. All right, let's talk about performance. Over at Digital Foundry, they've run some great tests comparing the two CPUs in gaming performance. They use a Titan X for, for their GPU, so there's gonna, not gonna be a bottleneck with the video card, so you really get to see how these CPUs perform. So all in all, what were the results? There was an average difference of 5.4 FPS favoring the i5-6600K. No surprise that it would favor the newer processor. That equates to an average percentage increase of 5.74%. Now we should note that the Z170 motherboard is a little more expensive than the Z97 motherboard. The MSI Z97 Gaming 5 motherboard is $146 versus the $180 Z170A Gaming M5 board. Now, both these boards can overclock, but the newer board supports up to 3200 DDR4 memory and double the capacity at 64 gigabytes. It also has two USB 3.1 ports, A and C, and it has steel where you put your GPU so it holds it more securely in place for transporting. Also, it has an optical out, and all of this at an increase of price of $34 or 23.29%. Now briefly about DDR4 RAM that the Z170 chipset supports. Two 8GB sticks of DDR3 Crucial Ballistic Sport cost $78, while DDR4, two 8GB sticks of DDR4 2400 memory is $115, a $37 or a 47.44% increase in price per gigabyte. So the total increase in price, if you isolate those three components that it would take to get the new chipset, is $91, or a 20% increase when comparing three components to three components. Now $91, that's almost enough money to jump from an i5-4690K to an i7-4790K. And the test at Digital Foundry that we were talking about with the Titan X that compared the frames per second you would get in nine different games actually showed that the 4790K scored a 1.31% increase over the i5-6600K or an average of 1.06 frames per second. So that kind of doesn't mean that much, but the i7 also has hyper-threading, which is great for video editing, rendering, 3D modeling, and heavy multitasking. Is it worth it? That's up to you. You can definitely make a really sick gaming build with the latest generation processor for only $91 more. So we wanted to show you our $1,200 build after seeing lots of awesome looking Skylake builds. So without further ado, here are the parts. For the processor, as you might have guessed, we went with the Intel Core i5-6600K 3.5 GHz quad core processor. So you're getting the new 6th generation CPU and it performs like a champion and it's a monster in gaming. We actually saw the biggest jump in performance benchmarks with the i7-6700K providing a higher FPS and a level of stability that's superior to even an overclocked i5-6600K. However, we are saving the i7-6700K for a different build that is a little higher in budget given its hefty $360 price tag. That said, modern games are really utilizing all four cores, and a lot even all eight threads in the case of the i7. So a beastly quad-core CPU like the i5-6600K 
is a great fit for our $1,200 build. Since these new CPUs don't come with a stock heatsink fan, we threw in a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo 82.9 CFM sleeve bearing CPU cooler, which kind of has been dominant for price to performance being only $27 and holding its own against much pricier liquid CPU coolers. This was something you would probably want anyway if you were purchasing a K series processor to take advantage of its overclocking potential. If you wanted something superior to the Hyper 212 and wanted to stay within the budget, you'd have to make sacrifices in other components, and we felt the Hyper 212 Evo was a great great value. For the motherboard, just as we used in our comparisons, we went with the MSI Z170A Gaming M5 ATX LJ1151 motherboard for $180. It supports up to 64 gigabytes of 3200 DDR4 memory that you can overclock up to 3600. It's on the 1151 socket, as you already know, for the new chipset. It's great at overclocking and has six 6 gigabit per second SATA ports, RAID crossfire, and SLI support, SATA Express, and lots of connectivity options, including two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports. That give up to 10 times the transfer speed of USB 2.0 and up to double that the transfer speeds of USB 3.0. So all in all, it's just a really nice looking motherboard packed with features. For the RAM, we chose two 8GB sticks of Crucial Ballistic Sport DDR4 2400 memory for just $115. Two 4GB sticks would have sufficed, and we should add that right now two Crucial Ballistic Sport 4GB sticks of DDR4 memory are only $60 on Amazon right now. So comparatively speaking, we will not be receiving much of a price savings per gigabyte, opting for our 16GB choice at $115. For storage, we went with two different drives. One Samsung 850 EVO Series 250 gigabyte solid state drive for just $90 on Amazon right now. This is for the OS and key applications. The continual decline in price of solid state drives is just awesome, as I know more and more people are adding SSDs to their build for that extra fast boot up and load times. For our mass storage, we chose the ever popular one terabyte Western Digital 7200 RPM mechanical hard drive for just $49. This is perfect for storing your games, movies, music, pictures, etc. For the graphics card, we went with the MSI rating on R9 390 8GB video card for $330. From the benchmarks we've seen, it has an edge on the similarly priced GTX 970 that John currently uses. At the moment, a lot of Nvidia's 900 series cards are coming with Metal Gear Solid 5, but for strictly performance, we believe the R9 390 is a better value and has a much larger video buffer at 8GB. We definitely didn't want to skimp out on the graphics card once we already put a beefy processor into the build. This paired well with the Core i5 66 600K improves exceptional for 1080p gaming, maxing out any game and achieving over 60 frames per second, and it'll also serve you well for gaming in 1440p. For the case, we went with something a little bit different color-wise. The NZXT Phantom 410 Red ATX Mid-Tower Case. I love the look of the Phantom Case, and NZXT has definitely solidified their reputation for delivering quality products. Most notably, this case is red, which I know doesn't appeal to everyone, so there's also a choice of gunmetal, black, and white. Maybe I've just been staring at my black case for too long or Savannah's white case, but either the gunmetal or the red looks so cool to us. It has three external drive bays in the front that aren't visible without opening the little door in the front, so it keeps a clean looking aesthetic. It also has a fan controller and comes with two 120mm fans and one 140mm fan with a blue LED. Lastly, for the power supply, we went with the EVGA G2 751 80 plus gold certified fully modular ATX power supply. This is a premium power supply and will provide plenty of power to the build. It has a 10 year warranty. Yes, a 10 year warranty. That's definitely a vote of confidence as to the reliability of this unit and it's fully modular which will be very helpful for cable management. Thanks everyone for watching this edition of Savannah and John Build a PC. Let us know what you think about Skylake. We didn't intend for this to be a fully comprehensive Skylake video as there's a lot of information to cover and a lot of benchmarks to examine and a lot of more benchmarks to come. But hopefully you liked our build and if you are building a new rig, we hope this will help you out with some of those intricate decisions and trade-off choices you'll inevitably have to make when building your PC. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and comment if you have a comment and subscribe to our channel if you have already. Until next time.